I'm continuing now with the alien isolation air shaft texturing and uh, we've got a few different materials to work on we're going to do this part here this blackish gray part we've already created a smart material for that uh, in a previous video and then we're going to create this gold part here and we're going to do the grips and then we're going to do the emissive um, material and we're going to bring that into blender and make it work in blender so here we go all right so here we are and the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to come in and i want to separate out these cylinder pieces here Control plus p break them out because when you use smart uv project it's pretty good for using uh, or for doing an overall procedural texture but if you want to put a specific pattern on it it's not that great so i'm going to i'm going to unwrap these separately so i'm going to focus on them and i also want to make a change up here um, I want to select that vertex and come out and delete those vertices and I want to cap this off and make my own seam there, mark a seam there. I'm going to do the same on the bottom. I'm going to mark a seam and 3 is looking sort of right at it. So control 3 is the part against the wall. So I'm going to select this edge, control E, mark seam. All right, so I'm going to do that for all of these pieces, and then we'll come back. So I've done all of those pieces. All right. Now, the other part we're going to deal with is this here. I'm going to select and separate out these parts that I'm going to have an emissive texture, because it'll be easier if I separate these from the base down here that's going to be metal. So control plus a bunch of times p to break them out so on this piece i'm going to u smart uv project i'm using an island margin of 0 0.003 and we smart uv projected that actually i want those as well i'll go ahead and i'll smart uv project them the only thing i didn't smart uv project are these i'm going to select them and go u unwrap this is a better unwrap for these so with that done i'm going to select everything and now these these bars here let's see if i can just focus on on just one of those that's quite large compared to the other structures and it doesn't make really any sense um, in terms of everything that this would be so big on the uv map so i'm going to select everything and i'm going to come to blender uv average island scale and that's going to create a, a UV map for everything sort of with relative sizes that make more sense. Now I'm going to pack and pack. And there's my UV map. Okay. So with everything selected, I'm going to export this as an FBX and bring it into Substance Painter. There it is. It's got a name of base material. Let's change that to air shaft entry. All right, we're going to bake the mesh maps. I'll do this at 2K and check ID. Now we have a look at this and we look for things like uh, dark shadows and streaking and stuff. And it looks like it did a good job. So I think we're all right. So we'll come over to layers and get rid of that one. We'll come to the smart materials. And this is the material that we created, that smart material in a previous video. So I'm going to drag that on. And already it looks pretty good. Now you're going to notice it doesn't look exactly like real world metal. Um, I like this kind of look. I'm not going for reality. So that's something that I like. Okay. So with that done, that's our base metal. That's our silverish black stuff. I want to do some gold here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this layer. I'm going to call this gold. And I'm going to come in and on the steel rough, right on the base material, I'm going to change the color here. Something like that. I might up the roughness a little bit and do the same down here on the base material. Up the roughness. All right, so now it's all gold, but we don't want that. So I'm going to add a black mask, and now the gold is not visible while the black mask is selected i'm going to come over here to polygon fill and over to properties and i'm going to choose the cube here mesh fill and click on the things that i want gold 
So I want this area here, I want the bar, I want this arrow, and I want that arrow. Click the brush, and we have some of what we needed to do. The next thing we're going to do is work on the grips. So the way I'll do that is in the Smart Material library here. I'm going to search for rubber. This one comes standard in Substance Painter. I'm going to drag that on top, and everything will have that. We don't want that, so we're going to add a black mask. And again, Polygon Fill, and we're going to click just those grips. And they have the rubber material on. Okay, the next thing we'll do is to put that pattern, come in and come down to where it says rubber base, go into the properties and scroll down so I can see the height area. I'm going to go into the procedurals now and I'm going to search for a pattern. And you can try different ones. I'm going to try this hexagon border. I'm going to drag that onto the height and you can start to see something happening. I'm going to scroll up and I'm going to change the scale to something like 25. And now you can see what we're getting here. But it looks like the hexagons are protruding out instead of the circles. So I'll scroll down where it says invert. I'm going to click true. Now you can play with the balance if you need to. To adjust that, all of that. And that's looking fine for me. And that's why I unwrap them on their own so that the pattern could wrap around relatively nicely. Okay, so far so good. Don't forget you can hold shift and right mouse button and move the light around. Okay, there's one more thing that we need to do in terms of materials and that is to add an emission material down here. To do the emission, let's create a new fill material. And if we look over here, there is no emissive on here. So I'm gonna click on the plus, and click on emissive, and now it's there. I'm gonna alt click that and change the color to a color that I like. Something like this bluish green. I don't want it on everything, however, so I'm gonna add a black mask. I'm gonna call this emissive. And just like before, we're gonna click on the polygon fill, but this time I'm going to use UV chunk, this last one here. And I click here and I will have to make a few clicks to get it all but it should stay backtrack it should stay on this part here so a few clicks around and I have it on there and then I'll come over to this one there we go click on the brush I now have my emissive material there. I can change the intensity here, up and down. I want it about there, but I can also come to the display settings and scroll down to post effects, click here to activate it, and under glare, activate again, and then come in, I can adjust the luminance. You can see them there, and I'll put it on something like bloom, and that will look a little bit more like it does in Blender. All right, so I've got what I need. I'm gonna save this now, and now it's time to export the air shaft entry materials. This is all in one. That's why I like doing this instead of having separate materials in Blender. Okay, now we're gonna to come to File, Export Textures. I've got the name right there, and we need to find a template here, an output template that has emissive on it. Now the PBR metallic roughness has emissive. It's got base color, roughness, metallic, normal, height, and emissive. And so we can just use that. All right, so I'm gonna make sure I choose that in here. And you can change any of these. You can make it a higher quality if you want. Choose the destination you want. Now you can see base color, roughness, metallic, normal, height, and emissive. So now save again, and let's go back to Blender. All right, this is the piece that we need. Let's make sure we're in material preview. And I'm gonna click on it. I don't want base material, I want air shaft entry. And press Shift, Control, T, and navigate to where my textures are. Base color down to 
roughness and we can see that appearing I'll select here and all I have to do is choose that and it knows now this one I'm also going to put air shaft entry but you'll notice that it's not glowing so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come in and first of all I don't need the displacement because I'm not going to be using cycles so this one here I'm going to delete and I'm going to take this one and shift D drag it down this is, says normal we're going to change that to the emissive I'm going to press N to open up the side panel and change the label name to emissive so we know what it is and to close that I'm going to press control and spacebar so we can see this a little bit better and I'm going to drag the color into the emission on the principal PSDF but I'm also going to take this the UV information so it knows where to put it drag that in and I'm going to change the emission strength to we'll start with 15 and we'll see how that looks let's make sure that we also choose the emissive map and there it is All right and if we change the emission strength here if I want 20 it'll be like that if I want 8 it'll be like that All right, so we've done it. And we get a little bit of a glow up up there. Keeping in mind, this is all very dependent on the lighting. All right, so I've managed to bring in the materials that we created in Substance Painter, and it's all one material, which is just great. There is one last thing, however, I should mention. When you look at this, you'll say, hmm, the scratches look like they're actually facing outwards instead of inwards. And there is a fix for that other than doing it in the act, in actual Substance Painter. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this out and I'm going to pull this normal map up here. I'm going to come down to Converter, Separate RGB, duplicate that, and then Shift S and change it to Combine RGB. I'm going to join the red, join the blue, but I'm going to add one more, and that's going to be color invert. Put that there for the moment. I want the green to be inverted. So I'm going to connect that like that. Now I can pull this out of the normal, put that in there, and join that back up. So what I've done essentially is I've just put this stuff in between all right so that the green channel is inverted for OpenGL now when we look at this the scratches are all indented okay that's it for this video we've covered the gray material the gold material we've covered putting on a pattern and we've covered the emissive as well all right cool see you next time